Recurrent aphthous stomatitis. Fancy term for canker sores. All right, this is a study that goes into the effectiveness of 1,000 micrograms of sublingual B12 in regard to reducing those mouth ulcers down. Now, look at what I displayed here. This is from the study itself. Actually from the full study, not the abstract. If you look at it, and you look where I have underlined, after a six month period of time, those are the individuals who were taking the sublingual 1,000 micrograms of B12 that had no aphthous ulcers after six months compared to those which were on the placebo group. You see the 74 to 32 approximately? That is an amazing difference. Not only that, let's look at the pain uh, scale after about a six month period of time. Now, there's a caveat to the research, and please take this with you. It took about four months for the sublingual B12 to start having a statistical uh, significance, a dramatic effect per se. So, look right here, you look at the pain chart, and that goes on six months as well. Look at the dramatic difference. Again, 1,000 micrograms, 1,000 micrograms for those not familiar, is one milligram of sublingual B12 after a six month period of time. I would have loved to see the study go beyond six months. But with that in mind, let's get right into the research as follows. Vitamin B12, identified as an effective canker sore therapy study suggests. The researchers tested the effect of vitamin B12 on 58 randomly selected RAS, or canker sore patients, who received either a dose of 1,000 micrograms of B12 by mouth at bedtime or a placebo, and were tested monthly for six months. Approximately three quarters, 74% of the patients of the treated group, and only a third, 32% of the control group, achieved remission at the end of the study. 74% and those taken to B12, 32% those not. Who they recruited? Just to give you an idea. Patients older than 18 years of age who have been suffering from recurrent aphthostomatitis for at least one year with a frequency of at least one outbreak every two months. So these are individuals who are suffering quite a bit. The response seemed delayed for to about four months. The hypothesis in regard to that was this. The explanation of delayed response was the low treatment dosage. So the researchers were speculating, well, what if he did more? Reason being, according to the previous clinical observations, and patients responded rapidly after one or two months to injections of B12, which were a higher dose than the oral treatment. So they said, well, what if we tried more in the next study? Well, this study was from 2009. I haven't seen the next study as of yet. This part I really like because it shows the statistical awareness in regard to how to conduct the study. The sample size calculations were determined as follows. According to our previous clinical observations, as many as 73% of patients were aphthose free with prolonged vitamin B12 treatment to achieve, often we don't hear this terminology, a statistical power of 80% and a level significance of 5%. Given the assumption of a no aphthous ulcer status, 73% among patients in the intervention group and 30% of those in the control group were calculated with a sample size of 24 patients in both groups, so they decided to recruit to 29. It's a statistical uh, importance to those who uh, want to follow the research to make sure the research itself is relevant. In this case, yes, the research is relevant according to the statistic. The vitamin B12, and this is the conclusion to take with the study. The vitamin B12 seems to be an effective treatment for patients suffering from RAS, I'm quoting the research, recurrent aphthostomatitis, i.e. canker sores, regardless of the serum vitamin B12 level. That sounds interesting, a little, if not a little bit confounding on its own. The treatment is simple and inexpensive and has no known significant toxic effects. So to recap real fast, the individuals took 1,000 micrograms of a sublingual B12 daily for a six month period of time. The effects, the true positive effects of the B12 did not start taking hold till about four months and then continued dramatically to the end of the study at six months itself. The researchers speculate if they did 
gave the individual patients more. They may have achieved uh, remission status faster, or I should say no aptose ulcers. That's speculation and conjecture, which may be true, but has to be uh, determined in future studies. In all the other cases, really good study itself. I just would like to see a sequel to it, since the study itself was done in 2009. Again, we're off your channel signing off. Once again, DOI citation will be listed for you to follow. The study itself is free and fully published for those who want to research further. And as always, thank you very much and catch you all next time. See you then. Bye.